Hi everybody, I'm DJ Rachel with DJ NTV and we're back with another Summer Shorts tip. We had another topic brought to our attention that was of particular interest, so today I'm going to be talking about the BPM editor in Virtual DJ 8 and what to do when a song has a variable BPM. Now you may be asking, what does that mean? Well, sometimes, particular with older tracks, there can be shifts and variations within the tempo. Now, most of our modern tracks don't have this issue because they were created with computer-based programs such as FL Studio or Ableton Live or produced with a click track to ensure that these beats are perfectly in time. However, sometimes when we're listening to these older tracks that have a drummer who is manually drumming away, or maybe we have older hip-hop tracks where a DJ was... Um, again, manually looping the track, we can have variations within the tempo because of the human element. So this tip is a really great way to tighten up those tracks, sync up those beat grids to make sure that your mixes are on time and any effects that you're using are also synced up because the beat grid has been aligned appropriately. Now this is pretty involved, so I'm gonna try to keep this as simple as possible. But I do also wanna mention that this is something that you're gonna wanna do before your gig. This is really involved and needs a tuned ear, so this isn't something you're going to want to do while you're live in the mix. So you're going to have to take some time, get in front of your music, and make sure that your beat grids are properly aligned before you go live with them. Now I do have a quick tip on how to do this on the fly, um, but again, it's better to do this before your event. So let's get started. Okay, everyone, as always, we're going to be starting with the default Virtual DJ 8 screen. Now, before I dive into the BPM editor, I feel that there are some visual basics that I need to make sure we understand before we start changing um, the beat grids in our songs. Now, Virtual DJ has an advanced sound engine that calculates the tempo or your beats per minute and a beat grid based on the track that it's been given, um, and it is pretty accurate in most cases. Now, in a rare case that the BPM value or the beat grid is off, we do have ways of manually changing this, which is what this video is about. But first, I want to start with some of the things up here at the top. So this right here is known as your CBG, and this stands for Computer Beat Grid. Now this is going to visually give you your four count, and typically box one is downbeat one, beat two, beat three, beat four. Now the song that I have loaded in deck A has been properly synced up with its beat grid, so as you can see, it's going to align with the CBG perfectly. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And obviously the lower one is for the song in deck B. So this is tracking deck A, this is tracking deck B. I now want to talk about this rhythm window right here. Now obviously this is your mixing window where you can have both waveforms um, playing here and you can see visually if they're synced up or not. Now these boxes down here are known as your beat anchors. Now this is what the software is using to calculate the beats per minute and make sure that your beat grids are properly lined up with your song. So as you see here with my song in deck A, in my waveform where I have these beats, I have these anchors located right below it. Now I purposely messed up a track so you can see what it looks like when they're not in sync. Now, I know for a fact that this song is not 59 beats per minute. So the software isn't reading these, um, this waveform correctly and it doesn't have these anchors placed correctly. And I'm going to go over how to change that in just a minute, but I wanted you to understand um, kind of what we're looking at here and what we're actually changing on the track. So again, we're going to make sure that our CBG is located on the first downbeat and is appropriately counting our four count. And we also want to make sure that these beat anchors are appropriately lined up on the waveform so that the software can correct directly analyze the track. So now that we covered some of the visual basics in terms of what we're going to be changing, I now want to show you how to access the BPM editor. Now there are three ways we can do this. The first way is to come to your browser window, simply right click on a track, it's going to pull up this drop down and you can see right here the third choice down says BPM editor, if we click that it's going to pull up the window. 
We can also open up our point of interest editor by simply right clicking the waveform. It's going to pull up the POI, but right here in the corner you'll see BPM. We can right click that and it's also going to pull up the BPM editor. And the last way we can access this menu is by right clicking the tap button on either decks and it's also going to pull up the BPM editor. Now I want to have a quick chat about this tap button right here. It's really useful. Now as I said in my introduction, typically adjusting beat grids isn't something you're going to want to do on the fly, but if you are in the middle of an event and you notice that there is something off with your track, particularly with your beat anchors or the tempo, this is a quick easy way to fix it. Now as I said, I have purposely screwed up um, the beats per minute of this particular track so I can show you how we can adjust it with this tap button. So if we're looking at this song middle right here, um, very popular familiar track and I think we all know it is not 59 beats per minute. So I obviously have to make this adjustment. Now visually I can see first that my beat anchors are off, that these are not lined up um, with the waveform and frankly it's not even starting on the first beat which is here. So to adjust this I'm simply going to put my cursor right where the first beat is. I'm going to click tap and now it has shifted these beat anchors to start with the first count. So now you can see it's starting on this first box here. And remember when I was going through this, this was beat one, two, three, four. So now I know the CBG has been properly aligned. Now I have to fix my second issue here, which is the BP, the actual BPM, because as I said, this is not a 59 beat per minute song. So in order to adjust this, we can play the track. And then I'm simply going to take this tap button and I'm going to manually tap out the beat. And you can see that the beat grid and the beat per minute is now shifting. So now, again, if I start from the beginning, we have beat two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and these have been aligned. So that is a way to fix this on the fly, um, but again, it is not as accurate because you're kind of doing it by ear, so if you don't have good tempo, um, you may also have some error with this. But again, if you're on the fly and there's an issue with your track, this is the first way and easiest way that you can fix it. All right, we're gonna jump right on into the BPM editor. I just wanted to go over some of the features that we see within this box. So starting at the top, obviously we have our file information with our artist and title of the song. Right below this, we have our scroll bar. So this allows me to smoothly search through the track and really focus in on certain sections that I may need to do some fine adjusting. And this will be especially helpful when we're dealing with our variable BPMs. Down here, I obviously have my play button, and this is going to play based upon where I have the playhead. Now, this green line is our playhead, and we can move this wherever we want in the track, and wherever I have this set is where the play is going to start from. Now, the button next to that is going to be my play hold button, so as long as I have it held, it's going to play the track, and as soon as I let it go, it's going to return back to where the playhead was originally positioned. Next, I have the metronome. This is really great for auditory people who want to make these adjustments based upon on what they hear, not just based upon what they see. Um, the metronome will actually play an audible beat based upon the set beat per minute to verify that the adjustments you had made are correct. And clearly, if what you're hearing doesn't line up with what you're seeing visually here, then more adjustments have to be made. And we can also change um, the loudness of this metronome uh, in our settings right up here in the right-hand corner. Now this middle section right here allows you to manually shift um, the BPM values. Now Virtual DJ has determined that Taylor Swift Shake It Off is 82 beats per minute, um, but if I wanted to make a manual adjustment, I could simply type it in myself and it would make the adjustment with the beat grid on its own. I can also use these arrows to make other fine adjustments based upon, again, what I'm hearing or what I'm seeing. And this divide by two or plus two will help you set um, 
the, the phase of the song. Now, Virtual DJ originally analyzed this at 82 beats per minute. But if you feel that the tempo is actually double that, you could simply click the times two, or you could hit the divide two, and you have to decide kind of where the phase is most accurately placed. This next button over here will allow you to reanalyze the track based upon the adjustments that you had just made with the beat grid. And if you have a track with uh, multiple beats per minute, um, you would select this one. And the copy from the other deck, I'm not gonna worry about that today. It's, it's a more of a, an advanced feature with a different use and I don't feel that it really contributes to this particular segment. So I'm just gonna skip over that. Then we have these left and right arrows here. This will manually shift the beat grid based upon what you click here. And then this is our variable BPM button, which I'm gonna get into in just a second. But again, I just kind of wanted to show you um, the layout of this and what some of these buttons do and what they mean. Okay, and as we wrap up here, I just wanted to have a quick little talk about variable BPM. As I said, this can happen due to the natural shifting of drummers, or maybe you just have a song that does have a shifting BPM within the track. Either which way, we can pull up the editor and tell the software where these variations are and adjust the beat grid accordingly. So I have a song pulled up in deck A, which is a transition track, and it goes from 120 beats per minute down to 95. So if I pull, um, um, up the song and I hit play, you'll see that my beat grid in the beginning is off because the song is being recognized as 95 beats per minute, which is the part of the song that happens after the transition break. The reason why this software does this is because Virtual DJ, when it's analyzing the track for a beat per minute, it bases its value on the largest part of the song. So the 120 beats per minute is maybe only the first 20 seconds and then the remainder of the song is the 95. So obviously it's going to give the song with the longest value of beat per minute the priority. So what that means is I need to go into my BPM editor and correct the beginning part of the track so that the software knows that there is a variation here. So since um, the song recognized this as 95 beats per minute, this is after the transition break, you can see that things look pretty lined up here. And just to give you an idea of what I'm looking at um, and how I know this, this is seen by these uh, gray to black variations. Now the gray is typically the first downbeat and then it counts your four counts. So here's count one, two, three, four and this will also mimic what's going on on the CBG up here. So again, beat one, beat one, beat two, beat two, beat three, beat three, beat four, beat four, and that's how you know things are locked in. And I can also visually see that things are lined up pretty well. So that means I now have to go and adjust the beginning part of the track with my variable BPM editor to tell it, hey, you know, this part of the song is a little different. So in order to do that, I'm going to want to click on variable BPM, and then I'm gonna to want to set an anchor here. And as you can see, it shifted the grid and it put the light gray up front. So now this is indicating that this is my first downbeat. All right, now I have to go in and manually adjust these to get these to line up to tell the software where I want my beat grid to line up. And that looks good about there. Remember I said this should be at about 120, so maybe I'll just go in and type that in. And now you can see that these are all lined up. And then if I come to my 95 beats per minute, these also still look good because again, I used these beat anchors to tell it that, hey, this is a different part of the song. I need you to line the beat grid up a different way. So this can work with really any type of track. Again, if you even if you have, um, you know, I just pull up another song here. I have the Ramones. Um, same thing with this track. There are natural, excuse me, drifting progressions. It looks pretty good right here, but you can see it kind of starts to drift. So again, I could open up the editor and simply uh, set 
a beat anchor and you see how it just kind of corrected that and, and made the beat grid adjust to the anchor that I set. This is what you're going to have to do. Now, as I said, this can be very time consuming and it needs a tuned ear. You also have the option of using your metronome. So once you start playing it, if you want to hear if your metronome is syncing up also with the beat grid markers that you see here, that's another option you have, but it needs um, some time and attention to make these corrections. This isn't something you want to do on the fly. So I hope this was helpful for you to see how the BPM editor um, can really help you lock in your tracks and really lock in those mixes. So I hope this helped you figure out how the BPM editor works and how to deal with songs that have different variations within the BPM and how we can correct that. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like and share this video. And if there's anything that I missed, feel free to leave it in the comments or also leave maybe some feedback in terms of other videos you'd like to see here on DJ NTV. I'm DJ Rachel and as always, happy mixing.